trying to catch up on some of the half-turned bowls I've got sitting around my shop here. This is a nice box elder piece. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about finishing and I'm going to focus on tongue oil. We'll get to that shortly. Now, as far as my videos are concerned, I put one up a week and I'm going to shake things up just a little bit. I'm going to add a video. So I have five videos per month. Now, this particular video is going to be put up November 13th. Okay, and my notes from the churning shop video is going to follow on the next Wednesday, uh, which would be November 16th. So stay tuned for that and look for it. And it would help if you subscribe and just get a notification of when my videos come out. Anyway, let's get into the today's video. Anyway, let's get into the <laughs> anyway, let's get into today's video. And we'll take a look at uh, tongue oil and some other finishes. And I hope you subscribe and like my channel. Leave a comment, please. This particular video, the topic for this video, was inspired by some comments I've gotten recently and over the years about tongue oil. So the two areas I'm going to really cover in this video are going to be um, the cost of tongue oil, is it really, really expensive or is it comparable to other oil finishes especially? Well, my conclusion is, yeah, it's a quite reasonable. It's not all that expensive to use tongue oil. And I'll get into all the details here. The other question I would have is, is it a good finish for wood turning? And my answer to that is, maybe not. Okay, and we'll get into that as well because it has to do with drying. So uh, basically there are two types of finishes in general, drying finishes and non-drying finishes, and the same applies to tongue oil. So here's, a, here's my container of, of tongue oil that I use. This is from uh, the Real Milk Paint Company. And this is my favorite. And I'll put up prices um, for all the things I mentioned here. All those finishes and solvents and different things. And I will equate it to a gallon. If I can't find a gallon price on something, I will you know, kind of multiply and, and figure out what that uh, cost is per gallon. Okay. Um, okay, where do we start here? One reason I don't think tongue oil is absolutely the best finish out there for wood turners is, especially if you're using pure tongue oil. Well, pure tongue oil takes a long time to dry, and you can do some research on this, and I've seen anywhere from, from 24 hours to a week per coat, and the more coats you put on, it may take weeks for the the first, second, third layers of that pure tongue oil to dry. To illustrate the drying properties of tongue oil, and just generally another oil finish that I use in my shop, um, I put some tongue oil on this uh, shop towel, uh, November 1st. And I know the dates are out of order, but today is November 6th. Okay, so five days, all right, five days. And I can still get some of this tongue oil off on my fingers. It's far from being dry. It's just been sitting out here in the open air. Now on this shop towel, uh, actually what I'm using, I've got some uh, true oil. It's a gunstock finish. And I'm just kind of experimenting with it. I like it so far. I'm not doing gun stocks. But I put that on some of my bowls. And I put it on this shop towel. Okay. I mean, you can see this is uh, pretty stiff. Right? And it's really dry after the same amount of time. And I think the next day it was, it was pretty much dry. All right. So when you're using tongue oil... It takes forever. Now, I need to clarify, this is pure tongue oil. 
okay? This is not a polymerized tongue oil, so uh, you got to be careful. And uh, anyway, let's move on with the video. You know, so I would highly recommend um, a polymerized tongue oil. What does that mean? Well, a polymer is simply an ingredient put into a finish to help it dry. It could be some sort of a solvent. It could be a Japan dryer. Now, years ago, I used to do a lot of uh, furniture refinishing, and I built furniture and cabinets and different things, and I've had a Japan dryer in my shop for 20 or 30 years, and it's something that you add to a natural oil finish. Now, it doesn't work with polyurethane, which is not all that natural, but tongue oil or linseed oil and other oil finishes that are considered natural, it'll work with that. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go out and buy a Japan dryer and use it. It's nasty stuff. Don't get it on your hands. Don't breathe it. Wear a respirator. Uh, and I'm not really suggesting you do that. Okay, it's something I've done and I kind of figure out how to do it. It takes just a, a few drops in a container. I only mix up so much of a finish uh, that I'm using at the moment when I'm applying a Japan dryer. So that's something that is put into finishes. Okay, let me let me give you another example of this. This is uh, uh, marketed as a tongue oil finish, and there are a lot of them out there on the market. Now, price, this particular can costs $26. For a quart. So you multiply that by four and you get the price of a, of a gallon of this Minwax tongue oil finish. Now, if you look at the side of the, the label over here, the main ingredient is alphatic hydrocarbons. Oh, that's a fancy word. Well, it just means solvents. And if you look at uh, the safety data sheet, you'll find that some of these kinds of finishes uh, have a lot of solvents in them or thinners. Well, uh, mineral spirits, paint thinner, is really cheap compared to the actual finish. Okay, and I've seen some of these kinds of finishes with 50 or 60 percent mineral spirits or alphatic uh, hydrocarbons, solvents in them. Okay, I've also seen some of these kinds of finishes not this one necessarily. I'm not picking on Minwax or anybody else, but some of these have absolutely no tongue oil in them at all. Okay, you have to be really careful. So let me bring up my, my container of tongue oil, and if it's tongue oil or pure tongue oil, it's going to say that. Nowhere on the label for this does it say it's tongue oil. Okay, it would say that if it had tongue oil in it, it might have 5%, maybe not. This is pure tongue oil. Now, how do you help this tongue oil dry? Number one, you add mineral spirits to it. You thin it down with some solvent, okay? And I looked in here just a second ago, and it, it looks like uh, maple syrup. It's really, really thick. It's like honey, okay? Well, you apply that to a, a piece of wood or a board or a turn piece, and it's going to take a long time for that to dry. So you add, I would add 50% paint thinner to that. That's step number one. That means that the uh, mineral spirits will help this tongue oil product dry faster. If I just used this pure tongue oil product on something it would take a long time. So to me, it's not the best um, product to use or finish to use on a, one of our wood turned items. Okay, it would take a long time for it to dry. Is it worth it? I don't think so. Now, let me, let me bring in another one of my favorites. And this is a, one of my mixtures of Sam Maloof. And if you don't know who Sam Maloof is, you should investigate him. He was uh, passed away a number of years ago. He was uh, an American woodworker. He made uh, the famous Maloof Rockers. And anyway, he came up with uh, really a two-part finish. And I'm not going to go into great detail on that. I've done that in other videos. But he had 
uh, a mixture of tongue oil, boiled linseed oil, beeswax, and paint thinner to thin it down. And he would mix all that up. And that was part one or part two of his finish. I can't remember. Then the next part was just as complicated. Okay, but he would add a drying oil into his mixture. Okay, and that would help the product dry. Okay, so if you just use pure tongue oil, I don't know if anybody who does that. And please leave comments on your experience with using uh, pure tongue oil or maybe raw linseed oil. Okay, I'm a big fan of raw, I'm a big fan of linseed oil. Okay, now I am a big fan of linseed oil, okay? And I would recommend the boiled linseed oil, right? That means that it will dry, okay? There are ingredients in here that will help this product dry. Now, one of the biggest complaints about linseed oil is that, oh, it turns the wood dark. Well, okay, if I applied boiled linseed oil to this little natural light bowl and just sat, sat it there and watched it, how long would it take before that wood darkened because of the linseed oil? I don't know. I don't worry about stuff like that, okay? Um, you'll find linseed oil in paint. You'll find it in a lot of other products like these kinds of mixtures that you can buy all formulated and mixed up and ready to go. Why? Because linseed oil is cheap compared to, uh, you know, other finishes, lacquer, shellac, polyurethane, varnish, whatever it is. And I'll, I'll put a, a screenshot up here of the price of linseed oil. Richard Raffin uses linseed oil, uh, I think, almost exclusively. He always has. You know, and if it's okay for Richard, well, what the heck. Uh, I think it's a good finish. I think it's a great finish. And a lot of the, the items that I mix up and use as a finish, including my Sam Maloof mixture, has bo you know, boiled linseed oil in it. Okay. Um, if you're buying raw linseed oil, which is a non-drying oil, uh, you got to add something to it to help it dry or it's gonna take a long time. Some of the oil finishes, I've made a list here. Um, tongue oil, of course, linseed oil, whether it's raw or boiled, Danish oil, walnut oil, uh, olive oil, teak, mineral oil, polyurethane, urethane, eh. um, One of the terms that I see pop up quite a bit is, is <laughs> varnish. Okay, what is varnish? Well, varnish has, come to be, I need to find my note here. The word varnish is often used as a generic term for any wood finish, including lacquer and shellac and oils, polyurethane. Um, there was a time, well, I, and probably you can still buy it, um, a varnish oil, which is a really, really excellent finish to use, okay? But varnish might apply to shellac by some people. So you have to be careful about the terminology. Um, polymerized tongue oil, let's get back to tongue oil here for just a second. Polymerized tongue oil is tongue oil that has had dryers added or something added to help it dry. And that's what I would recommend. Okay, and I'm gonna put up a screenshot of some polymerized tongue oil that I found and the price, and it's not that bad. Getting back to my initial uh, point in the introduction is that the cost of tongue oil is not that great. Not when you look at uh, other finishes. Please don't misunderstand the message I'm trying to pass on to you this morning. I use lots of different finishes and I, I don't really restrict myself to finishes that are less expensive, all right? Here's a couple examples. These are the uh, doctor's wood shop type finishes. And I, I had one that um, was for bowls and I used it all up. Really, really good product. But these can be very expensive. This is a, 
How big is this container? This is 16 fluid ounces. It's certainly not a gallon, but for a gallon, it would be really expensive. Certainly more expensive than tongue oil. But I use these products, okay? I also use this kind of product. You know why? Because it's fast, it's convenient, and it does last a long time. Um, I do use it. It's a good, good product for touching up a finish. When I used to refinish furniture, uh, I used a lot of polyurethane. And I'm sorry, I, I don't think there's anything better. Oh, I shouldn't say that. But polyurethane is a really hard, durable finish and, and nothing better for a tabletop like for your kitchen. Okay, it's a great finish. But I use those kinds of products. Um, anyway, what else do I have here? Uh, while I'm on my soapbox, getting back to drying oils and non-drying oils. Mineral oil is a non-drying product, okay? I don't believe, I'm gonna say it right out, this is not a, a finish for wood, okay? If you put it on a cutting board or a salad bowl, it's gonna wash away. Um, in the old days, I mean 25, 30 years ago, I made 50 cutting boards a year and I sold them all. And I would really, really seal that wood primarily with uh, tongue oil and polyurethane and varnish, and I'd have, a, I'd have five coats of that on that cutting board. Now, I would recommend to people, you know, go ahead and refurbish your board with mineral oil. It's easy and safe and they can do it, but if you try to educate the public on, um, you know, applying a finish like that, uh, it's really difficult, but it's not a finish. It's gonna wash out and it just doesn't last. It's good for wet sanding, okay? Uh, I'm not trying to irritate people. That's not my mission this morning, but I'm not gonna to lie to you. You know, uh, if anybody is lying to us, it's the people that manufacture finishes. Well, I'm gonna end this video right here. I'm finished. I've said everything I wanted to say about tongue oil with a few comments on uh, what finishes cost. And that's an important uh, issue for all of us. So thank you for tuning in and uh, follow me on Instagram. And please subscribe to my video. I appreciate it and I will talk to you next time. Thank you very much.